So we'll start with variables. That's a pretty nice, easy topic to start with. All right, so variables are things that are able to be variated, but it just means uh, we're going to use a letter to represent a changing entity or quantity. So why do I put the word changing in here? Because differential equations are the study of how rates of change are related. And we're going to look at how rates of change are related, how rates of change of rates of change are related to rates of change. And we're going to start mixing. You pretty much, you have taken several antiderivatives, but you've only done very basic uh, differential equations so far where you basically just anti-differentiate once or twice, and that's your solution. Uh, so we're going to do uh, a lot more in-depth where your equations are not just, hey, what's the antiderivative of this thing? Which is calc 2 in a nutshell. So that's variables and equations. So equations uh, express relations between variables. So variables are just describing a single quantity or entity. And then if you mix a few variables together in an equation, it can describe how they interact. So we're almost ready to describe the title of the course, differential equations. So if I just put the word differential in here, we'll be right there. So we put a comma here. So express relations between variables and their derivatives. So when I talk about the relation between their derivatives, I'm, this makes it a differential equation. Oh, I probably should separate. So that should be a period. Equations express relations between variables. And if you have a relation between their derivatives, that's a differential equation. So that's differential equations. I think the class is called elementary differential equations, which just means introduction to differential, the easy ones. So that's what we're going to be studying, is how to solve equations that express relations between derivatives. And you may have, for obviously, first derivatives, but second derivatives, third der derivatives. And you may have uh, just the original variable with no derivatives in there. So it could be all mixed together different levels of derivatives. So we'll start with a science example. So living organisms contain C12 and C14, but C14 is radioactive. So what I don't know in science is things like, I don't know what living organisms are. There's probably some definition somewhere. C12 and C14 are probably
probably carve in something, but I don't have much more knowledge other than that right there. We're an example, but in terms of what defines the set. What's that? But your pencil isn't a living organism. Oh. All right. <laughs> All right. So let's keep going. So the C14 is radioactive and decays over time. This is a variable. It's going to change, decay, decrease in this case. So it is going to change over time. So it is a variable. So let's lay out our variables. We'll use t for time. And x equals amount of, of c14 at time t. So the rate that C14 decomposes is, all right, what word should rate make you think of? Derivatives. Derivatives, so it's talking about how something's changing. So in this case, we got time and we got x. There's only really two choices, dx dt or dt dx. It's the only two ways you could take derivative with those variables. So I want to write out the rate that C14 decomposes. So I want to know the amount of this carbon and uh, rate in this case will be a time, a rate over time of decay. So it's going to be dx dt. So the rate decomposes is the t derivative of the quantity x. And of course you could write it as an operator like this, however you want to write it. dx over dt, or you could write it as the operator d dt is going to operate on x. So you can write it either way. There is another way, well, there's lots of ways to write it. What's another popular way to write this? Uh, there's x dot. So we could go x dot. I'm going to stick to, I think this book uses primes mostly. There may be a time where it uses dots. I'm pretty sure we're going to go with primes. So that's the only bad, well, there's a few bad things about the prime notation. The main bad one is you don't see what variable it is with respect to. So you have to know somewhere that these are all t derivatives and not uh, y derivatives or theta derivatives or whatever. So you lose a little information by using the uh, prime notation. So we're going to suppose the decomposition has a linear relation to the amount present. So the decomposition, uh, referring to the uh, rate of decomposition. So the decomposition rate is in a linear relationship to the amount present. So what is the amount present? That's x. And linear, let's see, linear. So hopefully that's a word that's familiar to you. So here's a linear function, y equals mx plus b. So that little bubble is supposed to be what you remember about linear, hopefully. So it's going to be uh, a constant times a quantity plus another constant. So a linear relationship, we'll use the letter k. Uh, and we want our k to be positive, so I'm going to put a negative in front of it. So this is supposed to decrease. Uh, so 
I know the coefficient of x needs to be negative. Wait, is that right? Yeah, dx dt should be negative. The amount should not be negative. So x is going to be positive or 0. And uh, I want to have the rate negative, so I need a negative number in front of that right there. So I know that that value is going to need to be negative. And that's just because the amount's decreasing. Yeah, exactly. So our rate needs to be negative. dx dt needs to be less than 0. Um, that's why I put that negative. I, I could just write it as kx and say k is negative, but I just write negative kx instead. And this is lowercase k, that's not kappa, right? Yeah, whatever you want. It's, I'm just a k. Yeah, you can write kappa or capital K. They all basically function the same. So we're going to take our k to be greater than 0. So I should write plus b. But what do you think the rate of decay is when you have 0 quantity? 0. zero. zero. So our intercept is going to be 0 here. So in quantity x is 0, your decay rate is 0. So your y-intercept will be 0 right here. All right, so there's our first differential equation right there. Actually, I should let me circle the version, or let me rewrite the version without a b, because I know b is 0. So you actually can solve this. It's in a slightly weird form, though. Let's see, is that what we're going to be doing? Yeah, we'll do the calculus part first. All right, this is a differential equation. It's equation because there's an equal sign, and there's things on both sides. And it's differential because there is a derivative of the x variable in there. Now, when I say solve, we'll talk about solutions very soon. But for now, let's solve. I could either solve for x or for t. Those are two variables. Let me just say solve. We'll solve for whatever we get, and then worry about should we try to solve for x or for t. I'll probably want to solve for x in the end. I'll just write solve for x. All right. What we're going to do. We're going to get all x's on one side, t's on the other side. So we're going to separate the variables. So you're going to treat dx dt just like it is a fraction. You multiply both sides by dt. Now I don't want this x next to the t's. I want the x's by themselves, or well, grouped together on one side. So I'm divided by x. So I don't want to. So those are not separated. We need to move the x over. So I've done no calculus so far, just algebra. How do I get rid of dx and dt? So I need to actually take those integrals. So I'm going to anti-differentiate or integrate both sides. And remember, as long as you're fair, you do the same thing to both sides of the equation, you're OK. It's not always useful, but as long as you do the same thing to both sides, you're going to, be, you're going to have an equivalent equation. So we're going to, I'll do this in blue. We're going to put a antiderivative sign on each side. So I, that's the operation I'm doing. All right, tricky. What's antiderivative of 1 over x? It is what? 
natural log of x. So that's the one, if your rho is x to negative first power. So if you ever forget this, if you try to go and use the power rule, you'll have x to the 0 divided by 0. And that should be a good indication that's not what you should be doing. <laughs> so if you ever do your anti-power rule and this is what you get, obviously uh, it doesn't make sense. Hopefully your spidey sense will go off and you realize, ah, it's not the anti-power rule. It's the only number, only power you can't use anti-power rule for. All right, ln x plus c equals, what is the t antiderivative of a constant? It's the constant times t. Yep, negative kt plus c. So I did my antiderivatives okay. I get a constant because I integrated. What does it look like happens to the constants? They cancel out. Looks like they cancel out because I wrote the same constant. But, aren't they yeah, the same. Same. but they're not the same necessarily. No. So, I need to give them names, C1 and C2. They're different constants. And what I'm going to do is collect them all on one side. So I'll subtract. We're going to solve for x, so let's get the not x out of the x side. What happens if you take one constant and subtract another constant? What do you get? A different constant. So add or subtract or multiply two constants, you get a new constant. Or take a constant to a power, still get a new constant. Or some base to a constant power. Well, I don't know. Some of those you have to be careful on. But well, and x equals negative kt. Let's just go with c. So we'll just say c2 minus c1. We'll just call that c and just go with one constant. So this might be the first time you're really integrating both sides. You just need a constant on one side. You need a plus c on one side. I would just go ahead and put it on the side that you're going to uh, not solve for. So I want to solve for x, so I just write it on the other side, the non-x side. All right, we're almost there. How do I solve for x? So you can either think about taking the exponential function or the natural log inverse. However you like to think about that. So I'm going to ln inverse both sides. And I get canceling out ln inverse of ln equals Now you do want to be careful with your constant because I need to natural log inverse the entire right side, not just the first part of the right side. And that, of course, is the e to the negative kt plus c. So I did the rule where the sum of exponents is the product of the bases, like that. What is the number e raised to a constant power? It's a new constant. So let's let the constant a equal e to the c. So this is the equation solve for x. Now, I still don't know uh, the number a and the number k. So those are two undetermined constants that I have. So if I have some initial conditions, I'll be able to figure those out. And I think we'll have that. Yep. All right, so any calculus questions? We'll, do, we'll solve more problems like this where we separate. This is called separable. So that word separable, separating, is really important, so I'll underline it three times when you can separate all your variables, you can do this trick right here. So think of this class kind of like a magic class where I'm showing you a whole bunch of tricks. And you're gonna be able to solve certain differential equations with these tricks. So we'll get some initial conditions. The word initial might be a little misleading. They don't always necessarily mean at time zero. A lot of times they'll be time zero, 
but initial just means some observations that were made. So you know something about uh, not how things are changing, but what things were at some point. Not necessarily always at time zero. It might be at time one or some other time value. All right, so our conditions, we know that k is equal to 0 0.01. And t is in years. And there's 100 units at t equals 0 and 10 units at t equals ln 10. I'm not sure that we need that information on K. We'll see in a minute here. So let's see if we can get to that with these conditions. So let's plug in the numbers here. So if I write out, so our <coughs> Input is t and our output is t is independent. It's a little bit strange that your independent variable is t and your output or your dependent variable is x. So we have 0, 100 is our first point, and our second point is ln of 10, 10. So those are our two initial points, our two initial conditions. So we'll go with the first one first. So 0 is for t, 100 is for x. So k times 0 is 0. What is e to the 0? That is 1. So we got the 100 is a. So once you have 100 as a, you can rewrite your equation x equals 100 e to the negative kt. So we can fill in that a value right there. And now I want you to fill in those two values where you see x and t right there. And then tell me what k is. Hopefully k will be a nice number. So we know a, so we're using the actual number for a this time. We should be able to get to, t to k. And remember, e is a base that it's a natural base, so we, it's not a variable. We don't need to solve for e. What type of algebra do we need to do to separate k from ln 10? If it was plus, I could write it as two bases multiplied together. 
But how do we deal with multiplication? Not quite. That would be, so it's not product of two bases. That would be addition. So I think that's the rule we use somewhere up here, wherever that was. Yeah, right, right up here. All right, products of powers, how do they work? So they are powers of powers of products. So there's two ways to write it. That's one way. The other way looks like this. Because the products commute so you can write the products in either order. So powers of powers is actually commute. Which one of these is better? E to the negative k or e to the ln 10? So e to the ln 10 is just 10 right there. This is ln inverse of ln of 10. So that's going to cancel out. And 1 over 10 is 10 to the negative first power. So we should be able to very easily say what k is. What is k? One. It is 1. This doesn't seem very exciting. What was that? That was not the number you had to No, it sure, sure isn't. I'm not sure. Yeah, let's just go with this k value. I'm pretty sure this one seems right. Yeah. Solve. Yeah, I may have written two problems down and not really made that clear in my notes. So we'll just go with this for our k value. And it's a good place to stop.